All right, so you see the scene of the accident. Kurt's gonna break all that down for you. But the part he doesn't know is how scary it was to be in the apartment and watch him walk in. And guys, he has healed up nicely. We've been doing everything right as far as getting these things to heal up and no infections. But he literally walked into our apartment with blood running down his face, his hat covered in blood, all you know, just all bloodied up and clearly a little dazed and scared the heck out of me. He went straight to the shower. Uh, we went into first aid mode, went to cleaning him up and seeing how bad it was. And thankfully, it was something we could handle from home. I do believe he had a concussion. There is almost no doubt in my mind. But um, we managed through all that. It's healed up. I even think the one that's right here on his forehead and his head, we're going to manage to get to heal without a scar. So, in the end, it's got a happy ending. But let's hear how this thing happened. All right, guys. I don't know why Kurt has been putting this video off. But we're going to shoot it today. So, let's go get him. Hey, Kurt. People are asking for the video. It's time. Get your keys. Let's go. I just put out another At... Tech Talk video. Nope. Keys, van, let's go. <laughs> all right, guys. We promised it, so. Okay, guys. In all seriousness, last week, middle of the week, Kurt had an incident. He has not been wanting to share it. That's not entirely true. It's been raining. We've been busy. He's been put out, putting out a few Tech Talk videos, but today's the day. We are headed to the scene of the crash. All right, guys, before we get into the story, there's a piece I got to share with you. So I've been, as you guys know, any of you who've been following along know, I've been going on a lot of bicycle rides every day. Puerto Escondido is beautiful. There's so many cool beaches, beautiful homes, beautiful trees and flowers, and just, it's a really scenic place to take a bike ride. And what's really cool is we have these electrico bikes, as they say in Mexico. And these things are cool, so I just want to take a second to show these things off. Now we got these because we can fold them up and fit them in the van. So this is mine. So I would simply undo this bracket and it folds right here. For snows, I would undo this bracket. It would fold in half. The handlebars slow down and the seat fits down and it fits nicely right in the back of the van. So we can carry both of these bikes, which makes it really nice. Now just talking a little bit about the bikes. So I ha snow has the step through for the lower bar and I have this bar right here. This one is easy. Hers is easier to get on and off. I love her bike. I think mine is just cooler. Like, for example, mine has these cool knobby tires and hers has the slicks. Mm -hmm. And then I have this iconic black and orange uh, pattern. So I'm happy with my bike, but I like this step through design. Now, these things have a huge motor on the back. I believe it's 500 watt. But these things will go about 20 miles an hour. And let me tell you, in Puerto Escondido, there's a lot of hills. And so these things will pull through most of them. Some of them we have to do some pedal assist. And some of them are so steep that we even have to get off and push. But that's a rare occasion. And so these motors are really strong and I love them. And so if you look right up here how these things work. So when I turn it on, I have a dashboard right here. And so right here in the bottom corner, you can see I have it on pedal assist level one. And what that means is if I pedal, it's gonna give me a little help in terms of pedaling. Now, if I go all the way up to two, three, four, and five, that's gonna increase the amount that the motor helps me pedal and the faster I go. Now, there is a limit switch on that. And so the maximum the motor will push me is 20 miles an hour. The only way I can go more than 20 miles an hour is if maybe I'm going down a hill or something and I can and I can actually go faster than that. But these things have seven gears, they work automatic. There's also a throttle control up here so I don't even need to pedal. I can go strictly off the motor. There's a huge uh, lithium ion battery bank which we can charge right off the van. And so we love these bikes. And that's where the story starts. 
Come on, Snow, let's get in the van and go show them what happened. All right. So you hear us say this word, tope, a lot. I'm not sure if we've actually told you what a tope is, but in Mexico, topes are everywhere. And they're basically speed bumps. Now these speed bumps have no system in many ways, right Kurt? So they can be many shapes and sizes. They can be two, three, four in a row within like 50 feet. They can be one every 500 feet going through a town. Or you could just be driving on a curvy mountain road 30 miles from anywhere and then all of a sudden in the middle of nowhere this gigantic ununiform speed bump appears before you. Speed mountains more like it, yeah. but yeah. The summer speed bumps, summer speed ditches, summer speed mountains. I mean, there's really no system to these guys, these things, guys. So, I kind of wanted to lay that groundwork for you because I think you're going to be hearing a bit more about these things in a minute. Now, I'm not exactly sure where we're going. So, Kurt's going to be having to give me directions because I was not with him when this happened. But, while we're driving there, I wanted to tell you guys that they have slowly started to open the beaches around here. Some of the beaches, a little bit outside of town, are open pretty much daylight hours for exercise only. So there's no going and laying out in the sun and taking some drinks down there or picnicking for exercise only. And at two, I believe two, maybe three of the beaches here in town are open it's mainly for the surfers because this is a huge surfing town which I know we've told you before but they have opened those beaches from 6 in the morning to 9 in the morning for the surfers or the joggers or the stand-up paddle boarders so it now it does say for residents only so we have not gone down there yet um, our Spanish teacher thinks it would be okay but we might wait a couple of days to see how things go before we go take a walk on the beach but now back to the story. All right, so I have been directed to take the first turn off of the road. I don't think Kurt remembers exactly where the accident occurred. So we're going to have to look for it a little bit, guys. But That's it right there. We've right driven, here. Yeah, the roads the roads actually pretty good right through here. It's pretty smooth. But I'm pretty sure that's it. That's it right there. That's it. All right, let's go see. So as I came down the road, there was a guy standing right over here in the road, and he called my attention, and I wanted to steer clear. And so I kind of swung to the left a little bit, and I actually accelerated to kind of get around him. I don't know if he's crossing the road or whatever. I didn't want to hit him. As I accelerated, I had my eyes on him, and I didn't notice this tope. And if you look right here, you can see there's no tope on my side of the road, which is probably why I didn't see it. And so as I turned to steer away from him, my front tire hit this tope, the edge of this tope right here. And what it did is it jerked my steering wheel like this. I went flying over top of the handlebars and I landed right on my head, right on the ground. And what happened is, because I was going about 15 miles an hour, is my face kind of drug right on the right on the concrete and my elbow, my elbow smashed down and my knee smashed down in the concrete and my knuckles where my hands was on the handlebars and my whole body just kind of stopped and absorbed right into the concrete road. Now, my head actually bounced on the concrete twice. And I remember that because I was trying to push myself up and I just couldn't get up. And so I sat there for a second, for a minute, trying to gather my composure. And this, this man over here, this boy over here that I was trying to avoid, he came right in to help me. And so he came in to help me. And at this house right here, some folks came out, maybe his parents, they came out to help me as well. So super nice people, so, so thankful for that. 
they came out. She helped me clean up my wounds and bandaged me. They asked me if we wanted to call an ambulance. Um, I jumped on the bike and headed back home and was able to do that. But, you know, guys, I just got to say, this happened so fast. And I've ridden these roads every day for a long time. Now, I hadn't been on this road specifically, but I'm used to the Mexican roads. I'm watch, always watching for safety hazards. And in this instance, actually watching for a safety hazard took my eye off of what eventually turned out to be the hazard that caused me to land on my head. And so, man, I gotta tell you guys, probably should have been wearing a helmet, huh? And I know that's a controversial topic, but I'm not sure what the damage would have been if I had a helmet, but I'm gonna be looking for helmets. So if you guys have a suggestion for a helmet, I would appreciate it if you leave that in the comments like uh, a good brand or something, you can even leave a link. I appreciate you helping out like that. And certainly I'll be more careful in the future, but I just wanna kinda of close by saying, I'm so thankful for the Mexican people who were here and who helped me out. And, uh, and I'm just thankful that I'm okay, but man, van life tragedy, near miss. So this is the wonderful lady who helped me out. She came out. Muchos gracias. No, 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 Dos? Ah. Uh. Loco. Loco. Muchas gracias por uh, uh, el ayud ayudas? Sí. Sí. Sí, sí. Este es deber de todos nosotros. Sí. Poner un poco de nosotros. Sí. Ah. If you liked this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when we put out new videos. To see behind the scenes action and help support our journey, head over to our YouTube membership page. You can find the link in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in a few days.